Today we are facing some of the greatest challenges of our lives, from our health to political unrest, the environment, financial uncertainty, and the nation's racial divide. Welcome to Bill Myers Inspires. My idea for this show was to invite guests and get the conversation started, to take a deep dive into the issues that impact our world with an eye to exploring solutions. And we encourage our listeners to look within themselves to take decisive action to make a positive difference. Welcome to Bill Myers Inspires. I'm your host, Bill Myers. And today we are talking about authenticity. And my guest today is Tom Alvarez. And I would like to begin the program today with a couple of items. One is a quote, in the interest of authenticity, Carl Jung refers to this as individuation. Carl Jung held that individuation, the project of unfolding the flower that we are into an expression of our deepest and truest selves, as the essential goal this task is met with giants, demons and giants, what are the angels and helping hands we see that, that it makes when we listen deep inside. The costs of abandoning abandoned the project can be witnessed in the faces of the soulless and depressed and the violence in its wake. We can face the dragons, even slay them at times. We can follow our nighttime and daytime dreams. We can find allies to help our voices cry or call out. We can meet the challenge of our life project with a clear and certain yes. That is my hope. That is my intention in beginning to identify the headwinds along the way. That quote spoke to me because it really, when we start talking about the idea of authenticity, uh, it is uh, certainly connected to our ourselves and all that. So like to now go ahead and, uh, introduce today's guest. Uh, he's a great friend of mine and a colleague and someone who I have admired deeply for, for, for many years. Um, he is a wonderful individual and has lots and lots. He wears a lot of hats, I guess. That's where our kindred sort of comes into play also. Um, as a multi-talented individual. Um, who runs many, many circles, and again, with grace, he, he many times, and I am just honored to call him a friend, and I would like to introduce to you at this time, I apologize, I am navigating a different computer system to get this show on today, so if I'm sort of putzing around, please forgive me. Uh, again, I want to welcome my special guest today, Mr. Tom Alvarez. Welcome, Tom. Hi there, Bill. Hey, so so I understand. So you got your computer up and running, right? Yeah, unfortunately, I hope on the playback I hear uh, your introduction because I heard a lot of breakup. So okay. I'm not quite sure. Uh, I didn't hear the entire quote nor your introduction, but what I did hear is very kind. Thank you. Oh, you are so welcome. You are so welcome. So I think that there are a number of challenges. I, I came across one other piece that I want to share with you before we jump right into this conversation. And it is from a, an article from Psychology Today entitled Develop Authenticity, 20 Ways to Be a More Authentic Person. And the, the thing that struck me was the first paragraph, which says, being your authentic self can feel risky now in our screen obsessed world. We're just trying to, to fit in, be liked, and be accepted by other human beings. 
And as a result, the image we present on our social media uh, profiles and IRL have become mere presentations of who we think we should be and not reflections of who we really are. So how do we take off the mask we've been wearing and start to live a life of authenticity? I, I wanted to start with that also because, um, you know, the internet has disturbed me all, all along when we started off with uh, um, our profiles at the very beginning of the internet and, and our, uh, how we could be these uh, and, and utilize very much uh, false identities and give false impressions and, and the, the fallout from all of that, um, which, you know, oftentimes was, you know, predatory type behaviors and things like that, very negative sort of things when we uh, present ourselves in masks all the time. So again, this is pretty extreme case, but the internet is a, is a, uh, a part of our lives anymore. And I do believe that it can assist on one hand, but it can also uh, be, a, be a problem in, in us really coming to grips with who we really are. So I want to start start here, and I was I was thinking about I, I could go into reading your bio and all that sort of thing, and I just want to bypass that for a minute and just sort of do a, a, a quick overview of our conversation that led to this topic, which was, you're a man who wears many hats. He's an actor. He's a writer, a television and theater producer. He is Latino. He's male. He's gay. La 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 la. I I, I just wanted to start just throwing all that out because I think that we are many, many things. And that was where our conversation wonderfully led us to this topic. So I just wanna start there and, and I've laid out a few pieces to sort of give us a context. And now I want to allow you to step in and talk to me about authenticity and your thoughts about authenticity. Well, Bill, when we did the, uh, shall we call it the pre-interview, and you and I talked yesterday about what's a possible topic, you know, I thought about it, and I, I wanted to share something which I thought would be a great jumping off point. Sure. Uh, and that, you know, and if you recall, I said, uh, I've been in the process, it's clicking around in my head, but I've been encouraged to write a memoir. And, and that has caused me to be very reflective for a really long time. I keep procrastinating, actually sitting down. Uh, I've, I've, I've done, uh, I've had a couple of false starts. I have an outline in my head, but anyway, this, this memoir, I was encouraged to think in terms of how it might appeal to a large uh, swath of people, a large group of people. And, and to make it a story that's universal and that anybody could read it and, uh, and that it would have appeal to a wide audience, not just, let's say, local Indianapolis. Uh, 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 anybody who would read it could, could look on that page and say, oh, I, I, I relate to that. I've been there. I've done that. This person speaks to me. And so in doing that, Bill, I, I came to a realization that that will actually, when I get, when I get down to it, uh, that's, it's pretty easy for me because I've been on a journey for uh, quite a while. Uh, I, you know, and I, we talked about how, uh, how we are all made up of different layers of identities, you know, and in my case, you know, the things that you mentioned, I am you know, I, I was brought up Catholic, uh, I am Mexican American, uh, I uh, am an artist, uh, I've been in recovery, I haven't had a drink or a drug for nearly 37 years, I'm gay, uh, I've been open about that for some time. Uh, I've been on a journey of, of discovery for a really long time and actually the key is, is for me to continue in recovery, I've had to learn to be authentic because that's very important to people who uh, are recovering from addiction. You have to learn how to get honest with yourself. And, you know, that's, uh, you know, I, uh, uh, it's something, I'm a work in progress, I like to say, and it's a continuing journey, but it took me a while to be comfortable with all those parts of me. But, you know, the older I get with, with maturity and, uh, 
comes wisdom and you know with the experience life experiences i have i you know i i'm becoming more and more comfortable in my skin i'm not completely there 100 percent. i don't think anybody ever does but i would say that at this stage i'm 72 years old i'm uh, i'm further than i you know uh, uh, hopefully i i'm further along than um actually it's it's a uh, it's it's been quite a revelation to me to know that at this stage of my life, I'm pretty comfortable with who I am. So, did you hear all that? <laughs> did you hear all that? Because I'm not hearing you. I I did. Okay. I did. Can, can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. Now I can hear you just fine. Okay. Yeah. There is a. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's really wonderful, uh, but, but that is quite a journey. And as you had mentioned that the, the key for you to sort of tune in to your authenticity seemed to be <clears throat> wrapped around your journey uh, with regards to being in recovery. Right. Um, and I think that, that uh, I, I would like to, to hear how that has presented uh, you with uh, with the the legs to be able to stand on your own. But right now, uh, Tom, I want to would like to do something, and that is, I want to go to a break right now um, because we're having a little bit of a technical lag. So I want to kind of catch up. So we're going to take a break right now. So just hold that thought, and we'll be Good. right back in just one moment. All right. Today, we are facing some of the greatest challenges of our lives, from our health to political unrest, the environment, financial uncertainty, and the nation's racial divide. Tune in every Friday at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for Bill Myers Inspires as he and his guests take a deep dive into the issues that impact our world with an eye to exploring solutions. Emmy Award-winning actor Bill Myers is an accomplished actor, jazz musician, filmmaker, writer, educator, and speaker. As a biracial man who's both black and white, Bill leverages his background, talent, and voice through creativity, compassion, and connection as activism for social justice to focus on uniting the divide and compelling change. Bill Myers Inspires encourages listeners to look within themselves and take decisive action to make a positive difference. For more information, visit his website, BillMyersInspires.com, and sign in for the latest news and updates. Are you a subject matter expert? Are you here to share your expertise with an audience waiting to hear from you in only the way you can deliver? Are you ready to have your voice amplified across the airwaves? Inspire Choices Network has a global radio platform streaming to millions of people across the world. Professionally produced and supported by an accomplished team every step of the way, you can broadcast from anywhere in the world knowing your voice matters and we ensure it is delivered with ease and efficiency. Eager to hear your message, the world awaits. Contact us today to become an Inspired Choices Network radio host. Email become a host at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You're listening to Bill Myers Inspires here on the Inspired Choices Network. We're here every Friday. 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thank you for joining us. And now, let's get back to the conversation. You're listening to Bill Myers Inspires, and we are back. And we are here with my guest, Tom Alvarez, and we're discussing authenticity, becoming comfortable in your own skin. So, Tom, take it away. Yes. By the way, did you write the theme, your theme? I really like it. Did you compose yeah. it? It's beautiful. Yeah. yeah. I think. <laughs> so where yeah. were we? Uh, what would you like to know? So I was just talking about recovery. Right. Being your 
a sort of touchstone place mm -hmm. to come to, uh, a comfortable place with yourself. Correct. So I wanted to explore that journey just a bit, you know, and how that has served to bring you into alignment. Well, you know, uh, like many in recovery for a really long time, uh, and actually there was a parallel, you know, for a very long time, I carried a lot of secrets. Uh, I would say that I was uh, a functioning alcoholic, but I was also it took me a, a, a long time to, you know, to finally come out. I had compartmentalized my life. Uh, you know, I was in and I was out of the closet, depending on who it was that I need to present myself to. So uh, when I got sober, it was part of my, part of the, uh, you know, and I started uh, seeing therapists and I've had some, you know, I'm very open about therapy. I think everybody, should try therapy. Uh, you know, I, it's stigmatized, and you know, I think uh, I think that it takes a lot of courage to change, uh, uh, and it takes a lot of fortitude to do that examination. But you kind of have to do it if you really want to free yourself from um, you know uh, addiction. And so uh, the journey that I was on, it 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 it, it was it was imperative to me that I had to get rid of my secrets. And that meant, uh, you know, admitting that I had a problem with alcohol and that admitting that, you know, that I was gay. And mm -hmm. uh, both of those to do that was very, very liberating. Uh, you know, when you're in the closet, for instance, uh, there's that false notion that you're protecting yourself, but it's anything but, it's, it's a prison. And, to really be who you are, you need to let people know who you are and what you are. And the same with alcoholism or addiction. Once you can admit that you have a problem and then, you know, that there's an enormous amount of freedom in both of those. So being on those parallel paths has demanded that, you know, that I really pay attention to, you know, again, being as honest as I can to me, but also I try to be with others as well. Yeah. Well, that's wonderful. So, 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 so talk to me about your journey in, 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 in wearing many hats. Um, I, can you talk about your, your, you know, what you started uh, when you started your career, uh, the types of things that you were doing, and then just how it sort of stair steps from there and you can continue to, to develop? Well, my story begins really with the family that I came from. I came from a family of eight eight, uh, uh, one sister and, uh, you know, uh, eight, uh, seven siblings, all male besides me. And my parents were um, farm workers, migrants. They uh, are originally from San Antonio, Texas, and they would go back and forth uh, uh, in the late 30s and early 40s, uh, back and forth from Texas to the Midwest. And eventually, they made a decision to, um, you know, to settle out, and I grew up in Portland, Indiana. Okay, coming from this large, large family, I was like third from the last, and you know, being a middle child, you often hear you kind of get lost in the shuffle and kind of get, you know, uh, in my particular case, I never felt like I was really paying attention to. Uh, and, and you know, it's no mistake that I got into theater and television and all these kind of public arenas, considering how I felt back then. I needed a lot of attention, right? So, uh, but I, I now know that what I wanted and what I found is I wanted to have a voice. I wanted to be heard. So there's a mm -hmm. red line that runs through everything that I've done. It's all related to uh, communicating. Uh, and be it theater, be it television, being, uh, you know, music or acting and all those things that I do, it's about, you know, having something to say and having a voice. So uh, that's kind of uh, a snapshot of what my, uh, you know, kind of snapshot view of, of what my MO is all about. You know, I've, I've had a great opportunity to be a voice and platforms over my career, but that's how it started. And, uh, you know, I, I kind of, I, 
it all started when I discovered the theater. Uh, I was the first of my family to go to college and I had no direction, I had no purpose. My parents, uh, they, their goal was just that we have high school educations. Uh, my mother only had a few years of schooling and my father was for all tets and purposes illiterate. And uh, so their dream was for all of their kids, you know, to graduate from high school. But I went to college, uh, but I had no clue while I was there. This is the uh, beginning of the Vietnam War. And uh, I, uh, I didn't want to go to war. I had brothers who were actually in the Marine Corps of Vietnam, and they encouraged me to go to school, and, which I did, but I had no direction until I found the theater, and that kind of opened, uh, opened up the world to me. So that's where it started. Wow. Well, that's interesting, uh, the idea of um, uh, ha having a voice the need to have a voice. I know for me, that was, that was music. Uh, it was a trumpet, uh, that, uh, you know, growing up, you know, biracial very early on, um, I definitely felt the, the, the idea that I needed to be this or that. And I just wasn't comfortable with, with, uh, the idea of having to choose something. I always felt like the choice was already made <laughs> and, and in order to be me, um, I needed to uh, somehow separate from that kind of game, and uh, and what I found was music. Music uh, had sort of a neutral. Uh, it was my sort of shield. You know, it was that microphone for me. Uh, I didn't have to speak. I didn't have to articulate because I wasn't sure what to say. Uh, but I knew if I had the trumpet in my hand and I could play music, that was the means by which I could really speak from my soul and express myself and, uh, and, and bring some joy to other people. Uh, that, that was my way of connecting with people. I, I, outside of that, uh, identity wise, that was a, that was tough for me. So yeah. I totally get the need for and uh, having person, a That's why I've, I feel that you and I have, you know, have that connection and though, uh, you know, technically, Bill, I'm actually biracial. I'm what you call mestizo, which most Mexicans are. Uh, you know, the Mexicans were conquered uh, by the Spanish, the indigenous peoples. And I can trace my family back to the Aztecs. And I'm very proud of that. Uh, that's a long story, but actually we have documentation of one of my ancestors who was a pure Aztec Indian. But so I am like many Mexican Americans. I'm, you know, my blood runs Spanish and Indigenous Indian, and so uh, I'm biracial and for all intents and purposes. So I relate yeah. a lot to the biracial experience. Now, when you and I talk, I struggle all the time with with, and I, I still struggle. Uh, I've, I've overcome a lot of it, but it's been really difficult. Oh, people want to define you. You have to have yes. you to make a choice. Okay, I don't speak Spanish, and so some people use that as a litmus test. Well, how can you how can you so call yourself Latino if you don't speak Spanish, or you don't look uh, Mexican, or do you speak Mexican? And it's you know, I, I've learned to have a sense of humor about it, but you know, I, I don't speak the language because my parents. Uh, my parents uh, were punished for speaking Spanish in, in San Antonio, or at least my mother tells me stories about being in school. So it was wow. very told cool that we assimilated, that we, they were afraid we would, uh, we would uh, you know, be punished for uh, not speaking English. And, 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 and like so many, it, it's the immigrant experience, although they weren't immigrants per se, they were migrant workers who were from this country. We still have that experience of dealing with the discrimination and prejudice because of, you know, racism. Uh, mm -hmm. So, uh, but I was raised biculturally, so I had a foot in two different cultures. And sometimes I, I felt growing up that I had to make a choice. But, you know, the fact is, is that I'm uniquely, I'm an American, but I'm very, very proud of my Mexican uh, origins. Very proud of that. That's well, when awesome. I went to Mexico, it's interesting. I, they let me know very quickly 
that they will, they'll appreciate that I'm proud of my heritage that I'm clearly an American. And that actually quite helped me quite a bit with my identity kind of issues that I had around all that. Yeah. Thank that, you for choosing Mom's Meal. That is awesome. Yeah, how may I help you? Uh, I'm having a technical bobble here. <laughs> yeah. The age of Zoom, huh? <laughs> Today, we are facing some of the greatest challenges of our lives, from our health to political unrest, the environment, financial uncertainty, and the nation's racial divide. Tune in every Friday at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for Bill Myers Inspires as he and his guests take a deep dive into the issues that impact our world with an eye to exploring solutions. Emmy Award-winning actor Bill Myers is an accomplished actor, jazz musician, filmmaker, writer, educator, and speaker. As a biracial man who's both black and white, Bill leverages his background, talent, and voice through creativity, compassion, and connection as activism for social justice to focus on uniting the divide and compelling change. Bill Myers Inspires encourages listeners to look within themselves Hello? and take decisive action to make a positive difference. For more information, visit his website, BillMyersInspires.com, and sign in for the latest news and updates. You're listening to Bill Myers Inspires. Here on the Inspired Choices Network. We're here every Friday at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thank you for joining us. And now, let's get back to the conversation. You're listening to Bill Myers Inspires. We are back. And I'm here with my guest. Tom Alvarez, and we're talking about authenticity and sort of working uh, through the process of us becoming who we authentically are. One of the things, uh, Tom, I want to share very quickly is a, um, uh, I believe that authenticity is directly linked to our creativity and our creative selves. And uh, what I'm reminded uh, by what happens to our creativity uh, through a uh, TED Talk. It perhaps is the most famous TED Talk of all, and it's been in that position for many years, by Sir Ken Robinson. Um, and he, the title of his um, message is, or his talk Hello? is, Education Kills Creativity. Education Kills Creativity. Hmm. Disconnecting call due to no response. So what what do you think about that, Tom? Hmm, that's an interesting proposition, although I don't know that I completely agree with that. Uh, it depends on, you know, I, I don't really see, a, I don't really see a negative there. In fact, uh, I, as a writer, my creativity uh, is inspired by the constant learning that I do. You know, I never want to stop learning. I never want to, I never want to, uh, uh, I don't ever want to feel that I know everything there is to know. At, you know, I'm constantly researching. I love researching. I love, and I think in a way that I, I'm kind of an educator. You know, you mentioned that your background, that you're a speaker and an educator. As a writer, I think I do a lot of that in my writing about the performing arts and, you know, writing about artists. Uh, I learn so much on a daily basis. And so, it, you know, I, I for me, I, it's inspired my creativity. I, I Maybe, does that, do you suppose that means for some that the academia kills creativity? 
creativity? Could that be it? Because you know, there yeah. I I I've, I didn't I'm not a college graduate, so I'm an example of someone who didn't need that degree to succeed. I and along the way, I think it caused me a few roadblocks, but not really. Uh, so I, I've been self-taught in many, many, many ways. I mean, I had almost four years of college, but I didn't complete it. But um, yeah, yeah. So anyway, so, that's, those are my thoughts about that. Yeah, well, well, what he is referring to is, it's very interesting because he did a test. He is uh, from very much academia, okay? And yeah. so what he was referring to was uh, going into a classroom of uh, say uh, first or second graders and just asking a simple question like, uh, uh, how many of you can sing? And how like 90% of the hands in the room go up in the air. The same thing happens then say freshman year of high school. He asked the same question and nobody raises their hand. Uh -huh. And so the idea is, is that through the conform process of education, that sometimes what it's doing is actually we we lose our dreams, desires. We no longer want to be an astronaut by the time we're a freshman in high school, but we want to be on top of the world as as young children, we're closer to our authentic selves um, because there are no boundaries. Yeah. Through the education process, we're taught about the boundaries, and you got to decide whether you're going to take this class or that class. And if so, this is how you get the grade in this class versus yeah. that. You know what I'm saying? So, I, so that's really where he was coming from, no, um, just that, to no. provide a context uh, yeah. into. Yeah. I definitely think that he's got something there for sure, yeah. So, because I, I noticed that, um, you know, the, that the older we get, the less risk-taking, <laughs> mm -hmm. the less we're – we become more reluctant to try yeah. new things because we become fixed in our own pattern or, or uh, you know, you know what I mean? We're, we're in our little lane, our cubicle. We're comfortable in that. Yeah. And uh, I believe that, you know, growth is neither comfortable or convenient. Yeah. So uh, it, it requires us to step out uh, uh, differently um, in order for us to continue to grow. Otherwise, we sort of become uh, complacent and uh, con conform or become what everybody thinks we should be, as opposed to yeah. uh, continue to our own. You know, that makes me think of, of, of what you and I discussed about what we share in common, you know, you know, the, uh, the multi-dimensional aspects of our careers and all the things that we've done. Uh, I've never allowed other people to uh, define who I am. I said that earlier, but I've never let people, uh, people try to tell me like early on, well, you can't be in television. You don't have a degree. You don't have a background. How do you think that's, you know, it, and th the message was like, you know, who do you think you are? <laughs> you know, and, I always yeah. use that to my advantage because that just made me more determined to prove people wrong. It's like, well, I'll show you. And it's <laughs> like, the mess, uh, you know, uh, uh, people can sort of, uh, there are some people who who have a tendency to pigeonhole you and, and, and make you believe that you can't do certain things. And I've always resisted that. Uh, I, I, you know, I, I can do pretty much anything I put my mind to. That doesn't mean that, you know, I, I used to struggle with, you know, being worried about what people thought. And there were people who would say, like, you know, well, you've got all these things on your resume. It gives the impression that maybe you're scattered or like you don't really know what you want to do. And I would <laughs> go, why can't I do all these things? Who says? I can't right. do a musical or produce a documentary or sing in a chorus or, you know, whatever. Who says that I can't? I mean, I mean, what's the, you know, is there a, a certain criteria that you have to meet in order to, uh, you know, broaden your horizons or, you know, uh, try new things or, or whatever? And so I'm sure you experience some of those things too, right? Very much, very much, because people, yeah, again, they look at the resume and go, okay, you know, what, 
but but who what do you do really you know what i mean like yeah exactly you, yeah yeah, well, the key what is, is that the key is is that you know a jack of all trades and a master of none. I've I've been determined that if I'm going to do anything, I hope I can do it to the best of my ability. You know, I never want to do something that's second rate or mediocre because there's no point in doing it unless you know I do it to the best of my ability. So I think you know I try to I try to maintain. I'm very hard on myself, and I'm sure you are. Most artists I know. Who are worth their salt are, are perfectionists. You know, it comes with the territory. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, nobody can kick my butt like I can. And exactly. but 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 not only but not only that, Tom. I think that it's important to note that 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 I believe is true of everyone. We are our own worst enemy. Exactly. Um, and so I think uh, again, and and these are the deterrents. These are the things that we do battle with. That Carl Jung was talking about the demons and the dragons um i i think the biggest and baddest of these exists within ourselves um more so than anything that anyone else could put upon us mm -hmm. I, i'm i'm like you too uh you know somebody telling me i can't do something uh that's like uh you know spinach to popeye for me you know <laughs> it's yeah. like yeah. well now it's my life's work to prove you wrong Mm -hmm. That's what it becomes for me, mm -hmm. um, and but but it comes with a ton of research and a ton of you know a, a, a whole lot of uh, um, looking for um, quality examples of, of others and 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 studies of how others have achieved. You know what I mean? It, it's not random at all. I'm I'm a research hound, so yeah. I have to feel comfortable that I too am bringing the best that I have mm -hmm. to a situation as opposed to uh, skating is no good. Uh, I, I try not never to engage anything like that, or I don't want to do it. You know, if I, if I can't put all of me into that process, it's not worth it. You know, uh, it's, it's, it's interesting that as a reviewer, I've been doing that for 40 years. I've been an arbiter of, of, of opinion about other people's work. And because of that, I think it's been, I've had to, uh, I've had to be able to, uh, to be honest about my own work and to be critic, self-critical. If I choose to be critical about other people's work and put that out there, I better be able to do that with my own work. So it's given me uh, being self-critical when it comes to my writing or it comes to any art that I that I am engaged in, you know, I work very, very hard to make sure it's, uh, you know, the very best that I can make it, you know, and it's never, um, it never, it's never quite, you know, perfection, but it's, it's okay to strive for that uh, as an artist, you know, um, that's what, that's what, you know, there need to be standards of, of excellence. And that's yes. something to work towards. Not always get there, but I try. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I agree. But I think perfection is just the carrot that dangles in front of the greyhound, you know? Um, it, it's the thing that drives us forward, but I've yet to see or meet the perfect person, see the perfect play, the perfect screenplay, the perfect business plan. I've I've yet to see it. Um uh, I, I, I've seen very good. I've yeah. seen very, very bad. <laughs> well, last, but, you know, last night I was watching uh, this wonderful special on Broadway, which, you know, really was bittersweet. But, you know, there are these world-class artists on there, like, uh, you know, uh, Kelly Clarkson sang, uh, you know, White Christmas. And, uh, you know, there were uh, 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 cast members of all these shows. And, you know, i you know, I've seen the best in the world on stages during my career as, a, as an arts writer. But Bill, last night, uh, Patti LaBelle, some of the notes that she hit and the song that she was doing, I thought to myself, oh, her artistry, the, the her talent, and but the work that she put into all these years in her career, it just like gave me chills that that kind of artistry exists and that that talent and but it's also hard work you know every single note 
uh, it, it, it was just unbelievable. It was, I was in bless, you know, I, I, I digress, but that's kind of an example of what we're talking about, you know? No, you don't, no, it no. It that, that's inspires exactly. me so much, you know, to see, the, yeah. to see artists who, you know, they, they care so much and they love the their art form so much that they and, and they have the power to move and you know sitting there watching some of these performers who haven't been able to perform in front of audiences it just is heartbreaking you know yeah yeah well that's you know that's amazing no I th I think that when you when you when a person uh, you know evokes that kind of a response there's something about raw untainted truth that comes out uh yeah. it it's 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 like the heart is just delivered right in front of you and that is very very powerful um i don't know who and, said it but i you know I, I i can't remember who said it but someone the, the description that some performer gave about engaging with the about theater and the performing arts. It's an exercise in love. The performer, when a performer loves, they give of their heart and, and, and they, they give love to the audience and the audience returns it, you know? And I think people really, really miss that collective experience of all being one and, you know, and love is in the air. It's all positive, you know? Uh, I think people, I know that I miss it. I'm sure you do. I'm being, uh, I'm, and also being a performer, right? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, you know, when you did the uh, article, um, and I've, I've read many of your articles during this, this time of COVID and, and the shutdown and how all the performers and, 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 and arts folk have been sidelined during this process. And you, you, interviewed you know regularly um and checked in with many many different performers from many different walks and uh you have a series of pretty compelling questions regarding uh how has this you know the pandemic affected you personally professionally so on and so forth the one thing that uh, i remember answering one of those questions was uh and it was probably the last one which is what do you miss the most and my answer on that was I missed the hugs. Mm, yeah, yeah. As do I, as do I greatly. Yeah. Thank God I have because kids. It, I have cats and so they they are the receptors of all of this affection that I have. <laughs> and boy, yes. I just get it, you know, but no, I miss the human touch a lot. Um, so yeah. Everybody else, you know. Yeah, absolutely. But, those so that, that, who are in their pods and who have families that they can do that wish, they should count themselves very, very, very lucky, right? I agree. I agree. Absolutely. There is um so so when we're 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 going to ease into a break here uh, very shortly. And when we come back, Tom, I want to talk about one of the qualities that we discuss. Um regarding authenticity. And I think it might be uh, one of the most important uh, elements of being authentic. And the word is vulnerability. Oh yeah, yes, absolutely. And I, and I would like to, to take, a, take a, a, a peek into that word um, when we come back from this break, but I just want to say before we go any further, man, it is a it's a gas having you on the show. Uh, I apologize for all of the, the oh, technical, no you know. Uh, but we're we're getting there. We're getting yeah. there, and um, uh, I am I am so grateful to have you here, and grateful to offer this type of a conversation and dialogue to the audience, because I think that um, it, this is important stuff as we figure out and continue to wrestle with who we are and where we really stand, um, particularly well, at well, times I, I, like I, these. Yeah, I, uh, I'll tell you, uh, I can say this as part of being my authentic self. I've never been comfortable with small talk. <laughs> this yeah. is 
favorite, uh, my favorite thing to do to to have deep discussion with people. You know. Yeah. I just loved it. Yeah, me me too. Uh, it's an opportunity to uh, to to check inward uh, as opposed to just you know the the, the fluffy stuff. So. I, I do appreciate you being here and us being able to have that kind of a conversation. And uh, so we are going to take a pause right now and we'll be back in a minute. We will look into authenticity, but take a close look at the quality of vulnerability and how that plays into authenticity. You're listening to Bill Myers Inspires right here on the Inspired Choices Network with my guest today, Tom Alvarez. We'll be back in just one moment. Today, we are facing some of the greatest challenges of our lives, from our health to political unrest, the environment, financial uncertainty, and the nation's racial divide. Tune in every Friday at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for Bill Myers Inspires as he and his guests take a deep dive into the issues that impact our world with an eye to exploring solutions. Emmy Award-winning actor Bill Myers is an accomplished actor, jazz musician, filmmaker, writer, educator, and speaker. As a biracial man who's both black and white, Bill leverages his background, talent, and voice through creativity, compassion, and connection as activism for social justice to focus on uniting the divide and compelling change. Bill Myers Inspires encourages listeners to look within themselves and take decisive action to make a positive difference. For more information, visit his website, BillMyersInspires.com, and sign in for the latest news and updates. You're listening to Bill Myers Inspires. Here on the Inspired Choices Network. We're here every Friday at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thank you for joining us. And now, let's get back to the conversation. Thank you for being with us today. You're listening to Bill Myers Inspires. I'm your host, Bill Myers, with my guest. Tom Alvarez, and we are talking about authenticity. And we wanted to take a look at the the word vulnerability and how that factors into uh, our authenticity. So, Tom, would you like to step into that? I'm going to invite you to. Sure. To weigh in. Again, uh, uh, being comfortable with sharing myself and my story uh, has been an important part of my recovery and when if you do choose to be authentic if you if you can find if if, if, if you put yourself out there and be 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 a, and let people know who and what you're all about uh it's risky because there are uh, there are many people in this world unfortunately you know who mistake vulnerability for weakness and mm. some people seek to use that against you or to harm you or to take advantage of you because they think that if you're showing that, that, you know, this whole question of like, for instance, um, uh, when you choose to come out as a gay man, you know, a lot of uh, homophobia has to do with the stigma, st- uh, the stigma about you know, if you're gay, you couldn't possibly be a real man. Well, what is a real man? And I think, thank God, things are changing so that, you know, heterosexual men are finding out that, uh, you know, vulnerability is actually an asset. Uh, and a, a lot, I've seen a lot of men, uh, a lot, maybe not my generation, but younger generations, it's not an issue. They're very comfortable in their skin and willing to show vulnerability and to be sought. And, you know, I think that that is uh, something that I, I, have, I, I strive for to be able to, and I think that actually has really helped me, uh, uh, for instance, in my interviewing, because uh, I'm able to draw a lot out of the people that I interview because uh, I think that oftentimes they can recognize the vulnerability in me and somehow, that helps them trust me that I'm going to present them in a way that's not going to be in any way 
uh, make them, uh, uh, you know, make them um, harm them in any way. And so I think it's like most artists, you and I talked about this, you have to be sensitive to be an artist. I mean, sensitivity comes with the territory. I am very yeah. sensitive and it's been a blessing and a curse. It's been a curse when people, as I said before, have mistaken it for weakness and have tried to, you know, want to, uh, to harm because they think that, you know, that it makes you less than or weaker than. So, uh, you know, I think vulnerability is, is, is a quality and you shouldn't be afraid to show it or have it. Uh, there's nothing wrong with, you know, wearing your heart on your sleeve, you know, and I've been accused of wearing my heart on my sleeve, but again, it's part of who I am and, you know, so be it. I embrace it, you know? Yeah. Well, you know, I, there, there's a lot to be said for that, and particularly even looking at the current climate that we're in socially, politically. I mean, the idea of authenticity could really be helpful at this time. Uh, but we have a lot of folks that are sort of conforming to these single note narratives um, and falling in line and sacrificing uh, their own voice, their own observation. Um, and it's it can be dangerous when well, you know, no it, one speaks it really, up. It really just boils down to though a lot of those folks are just you know everyone is everyone wants to be accepted, to like, to be liked, to be loved. No one likes rejection, and there's a lot of fear of that because there are a lot of folks out there, frankly, you know, who who have toxic behavior. They don't have any clue about who they are, nor do they want to know. They're too afraid of it. It's something to be feared, either because that's the way they brought up, they're brought up, or the circumstances they're in, or whatever. But I find right. they're really at a disadvantage by being that closed off from the rest of the human race, because uh, yeah, it's that fear that makes people, you know, hate or or dominate other people or to oppress other people. A lot of it's fear. Uh, yeah. And that's a really tough thing. You know, we found, we've been finding that out about the last year with this worldwide confrontation of, against racism, you know, essentially. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, and, and women and gay men and, you know, people who are, all these folks who have been uh, in situations where they've been impressed have, you know, stood up and said, hey, it's time for us to start changing the way we think about other people, you know? Yeah, I, could, I couldn't agree with you more. And, you know, Tom, that's, that's really wonderful because you just folded that right back in to the idea that what we've really been focused on on Bill Myers Inspires since uh, the start of the show in mid-July, which was racism in America. And so, uh, you know, that focus um, on that topic and the observation that you just shared lead me to a conclusion, perhaps, that uh, vulnerability uh, is a necessary uh, step in us discovering our authentic selves because it is a very important part. Again, here, you know, my, my mantra is uh, creativity, compassion connection. And, uh, you know, I think that there's a balancing act that needs to occur. And without that, we become these sort of uh, one dimensional uh, figures. And I don't think that that leads us to certainly not to our authentic self, but to cardboard cutouts or something uh, void of feeling void of awareness. But it has been a pleasure having you on here. I've got 30 seconds and I'm getting ready to wrap this up. You've been listening to uh, my guest today, Tom Alvarez, and we've been talking about authenticity, and I will have him back here soon enough. Thank you for listening today. You've been listening to Bill Myers Inspires. Have a wonderful weekend. Ta-da. <laughs> Thank you for spending your afternoon right here with us at Bill Myers Inspires. Remember, we're here every Friday at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on the Inspired Choices Network. Remember to take time this week to take a breath and look within yourself and figure out how you can make a positive difference in this world. Spread the word. 
and we'll see you here next Friday. Have a wonderful week.